we're going to look at implementation of the law. So how the law is applied, who applies the law, and who do you call with certain things. So, you know, we talk about the police, we talk about the sheriff's department, but there's if different types of agencies that are going to help carry out the law. So the first thing we're going to look at is consumer protection. A consumer is anybody who uses a good or product, who consumes it. So our federal and our state government has decided to go ahead and make laws on how food and how these products are going to be used in their states. And they're doing this so that they can ensure that customers are safe. So agencies, remember we talked about it with the executive branch, they are a part of our enforcing the law. Government agencies operate a little bit different in the fact that they make their own laws, they enforce their own laws, and they carry out their own laws. It's kind of like they're a mini little government within themselves. So it's a little bit different than how our legislative, executive, and judicial branches work. So when you look at the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, they actually make laws about how food is to be treated, how it's to be carried out, how, the, how everything is supposed to go along with food packaging, temperature. They make those laws. They enforce those laws. So they go about inspecting factories. But they also rule in those laws in that they will set fines when companies aren't doing the appropriate things. So by making the laws, they're acting as a legislative branch. When they enforce it, they're acting as the executive. And then when they're actually settling fines, doing that judicial part, that's the judicial branch aspect of these agencies. So in our Food and Drug Administration, it was created during the progressive period. Some stuff was going on. Factories weren't clean. And there was just a lot of issues. People were getting sick. So we decided to start cleaning up this kind of stuff. So we got the Food and Drug Administration. Anytime food companies start getting in a lot of complaints to the government, the government's going to start inspecting things. Something might be going wrong in the factory. So what happens is a lot of people have gotten sick after eating, let's say, peanut butter. This has been actually a problem. So... A bunch of hospitals reporting, you know, high rates of, like, salmonella poisoning. And everybody was talking about how, you know, they had eaten, you know, like a peanut butter sandwich. All right. So what the FDA did was they started tracing it. So they started investigating, like cops. And they started to figure out it was this one peanut butter company. And what it was is the factory was not very clean. Like, there was some stuff that goes on. You have to remember factories are huge. Factories have workers that are coming in and out all the time. And when you have a lot of people, a lot of traffic flow, you have to be very careful with the cleanliness of your factory. And because it's really people who bring in a lot of the issues to factories. So... What ends up happening is the FDA told the company, you're going to recall, remove all your peanut butter from certain factories that they had linked to this contamination. You're going to recall it. You're going to remove it. You're going to give your customers who have purchased your product their money back. You're going to clean your factories up. And we're going to assess a fine to your company for not doing like due diligence, not doing proper care to prevent something like this. The FDA also approves pharmaceutical medicine. So anytime any new medicine has been created, it's going to go through animal testing and then it's going to go through human trials. And it's got to go through a lot. So when you're watching television and you hear those ads come on, those ads are telling you, hey, here are the possible side effects. They're having to tell you up front that if you take their medicine, here are the potential side effects for it that they noticed in their trials. It's been cleared, 
for human consumption. The FDA has approved this medicine, but we just want you to know that this medicine can also cause all these side effects if you decide to take it. They have to tell you that up front. That's consumer protection. So if you have kidney issues and this new medicine the doctor wants to put you on causes more strain on your kidneys, you need to know that because you need to choose maybe to not take it or take it. You know, it, it'd be your choice. Maybe you could find a different medicine. But consumers have the right to know. Another thing about consumer protection laws would be our Consumer Product Safety Commission. So any product that is created and used in the U.S. is going to be evaluated and checked by our Consumer Product Safety Commission. Think about car seats, our child car seats. Those are things that we're constantly updating because we are getting better technology and stuff. But they are something that you really want to work. You know, if you get in a car accident with your young child, you really want that car seat to hold the child in place with minimum hurt or minimum damage on the child. So they will look at like car accidents. They'll look at the reports on those car seats for children. You know, what was the rate of injury for children? And if there was too high of a rate, they will go back to the car seat company and they'll tell them you need you need to change something, you need to fix it, you need to pull it from the market. Sometimes companies do this voluntarily. Because you can call a company, you can always write a company when you feel that a product was not done appropriately, something went wrong. So there was some car accidents and some parents felt that the car seat did not hold their child in enough like it held a child the child had some damage but it didn't do maybe as good as the claims were so when the company started investigating and the company started to investigate here are customers who have complained to them they started to notice that it was the car seat belt itself where it clicks in and it was because kids eat in their car seat they're eating food, they're drinking, and that stuff is getting spilled all in that car seat belt. And so what they decided to do, they voluntarily sent out brand new car seat belt buckles for their car seat. All you had to do is go ahead and communicate with them online or you could send in a letter and they would send it to you. They voluntarily did that before the Consumer Product Safety Commission made them do it. So when you buy a product in our country, it is supposed to be safe for you and me in the news. When you go to the return area of a store, you're going to see Consumer Product Safety Commission flyers up. So if a product has been recalled, you're going to see it up there if the store sold it. So if they sold a toy that, and it's a lot of times toys, that is hurting kids fingers like kids fingers are getting into this part and it's hurting their fingers they're gonna have a recall on that and they're gonna say you can bring it back to the store and they have to refund the money okay all right the next kind we're gonna look at is transportation our governments also make certain that our transportation our mass movement of people is gonna be safe when you're thinking about subways, the elevated trains, our airplanes, our buses, our cars, these are things that you and I rely on every day to be safe. This is us moving to our jobs, moving to our homes, keeping our economy going. So transportation has to be regulated. You're also, when you're talking about mass transit, like our airplanes, our subs, those are things that you have one person, a couple people operating, and you're moving hundreds, could be thousands of people in one thing. So you want to make certain that it's always safe for people. So the Federal Aviation Administration, the FAA, they regulate our airlines. And when they regulate our airlines, what they're trying to do is to make certain that our airline companies are operating in our best interest, the citizens' best interest. For example, 
pilots. Uh, there was a big study done by the FAA that some of our pilots were drinking and then flying. Well, you can't drink and drive a vehicle, so you shouldn't be able to drink and fly a plane. And some of the pilots were drunk. They were intoxicated. They had reached the legal limit. So now there's a law. They're not allowed to drink prior to flying a fly, uh, flying a plane. And it's so many hours before flying the plane. Same thing with sleep. Uh, a study came out that a lot of our pilots were extremely tired because they were flying nonstop. And then they were sleeping in the airports instead of going to a hotel room where you could relax and you could go to sleep. They were sleeping in those uncomfortable chairs in an airport. So the, F the FAA has a regulation now. You can't do that. So there's a lot more like investigation and making certain that our planes and our pilots, the human part of the, of the system, is operating effectively, minimizing risk to the consumer. The National Transportation Safety Board, they look at like motor vehicles or any transportation of items, but they look at like the accident rates. So they look at like our highways. They make certain that we are trying to minimize the risk factors there. If you have a lot of accidents on a certain highway, it could be that the highway is not built properly, like maybe the traffic flow is confusing. It's not done appropriately, so you would need to point that out maybe to the state so that they could fix it. The National Aeronautical Space Administration, or NASA, is our space program. So you guys remember in American history when you studied John F. Kennedy. So Kennedy really did a big push for NASA, and we did the space race and the moon race, but now what we kind of look at a lot is medical research in space, and we look at a lot of scientific research, obviously it's space, but you're looking at like colonization of Mars. Could you take one of these planets that has not, you know, life, could you make life on it? So NASA does a lot of experimentation, but that is regulated by our government. Our next thing that we're going to look at is our regulatory agencies. Regulatory agencies try to make certain that laws are fair, and it's kind of trying to make certain everybody is operating on the same code, same laws. So anything that regulates a agency or regulates a business is a part of our regulatory agencies. The Federal Trade Commission, the FTC, they regulate, they monitor, they watch companies in their selling of their stock and their trade. They, they make certain that when companies make claims about products that it is true because that's the selling of your company. Stocks are public companies so you can buy into a corporation you want to buy McDonald's stocks you can you need to buy McDonald's shares now they're expensive but you can buy it and when you buy a share you're buying a percent of the company when you buy into the company the company has to report to you how well they're doing or how they're not doing well so they have to tell you that up front, and they have to tell everybody that because they're allowing people to buy into their company. The FTC makes certain that companies are honest in that reporting. It's rare for McDonald's to have a bad year, but they did a long time ago. Uh, they had a bad year. Subway beat them out. I mean, it, it was weird hadn't happened, but McDonald's had to report that, that they were not doing as well as they had in the past. That has to be public information since it's a publicly owned company now.